All right, here she is, 1964 C10. This is a 2015 bus frame. We're gonna put the Duramax and the two-wheel drive Allison in there, making it a legitimate tow truck. Twin turbos on it, just because we're getting two stacks behind the cab. Okay, hey, that looks like a frame. It took me a while to find the bed sides. I really wanted to build the bed next with our vintage tow rig in the back. All right, we got the turret mounted, spins around. That spins, look at that. All right. We got our cheap air ride bus frame. Now we're gonna try and build the cheapest air ride control system on the internet. It's a Dutch on our budget. And if we spend less on the air ride, we can spend more souping up the Duramax. Here we go. All right, back to my weekly visit to VNR. And uh, found exactly what I need, a little bit of angle iron. And the, all this stuff is for sale. You guys need to visit this place. This place is awesome. And then a bunch of tree sticks, which would work nice as T-bars for uh, between the rows there. Perfect. I'm gonna take a bundle of those, cut that up so it fits in my truck, and uh, back to the truck we go. So the reason we take this thing off is because it's a spacer because uh, the rims have this much of a, an offset on it. And that's because this is a dually, so you only want one spare. So the front tires are the same as the back tires. But what that does is move this way out. So that brings it way out here. We can get a, a less offset of a rim and tuck it nicely underneath here. So um, we're gonna see if we got the right airbag from uh, Thorn Customs there. I went to a truck shop, gave them the airbag because it was a Firestone bag, and they said, we have no idea. It's not in our system, nothing, nothing that matches. Brought it to Thorn Customs there in Dunville, who does a bunch of really cool air ride stuff. And he said, oh, that's a such and such and such. I have those in two days. So I have rims, but they're bigger tires. So I'll have to put these tires on the other rim, and then we can see what our uh, offset is, and then we can order the back rims at the same time. So, here we go. So right now it's all the way down, and we need a bumper for the front. So I'm gonna run over to Toosley, see if he's got something. Perfect. That looks pretty good. Uh, if anybody's got the uh, period correct side mounted AC thing that goes in the window, uh, hit me up at thebossgarage at gmail.com. I'd love to buy that off of you. Um, I think that would add quite a bit to just uh, that, that one side. It's like a C10, but because it's a tow truck, it's gotta be a busy truck too. Um, not clean, straight, nice paint, just kind of like the stacks and the, and the thing that's kind of the look that we're going for, that, that aggressive coming down the road at you, like, oh, what the heck is that? This thing is the jib, um, which will go on the end of the extension, so it slides all the way out, goes into there somehow. But anyway, um, we're gonna make a holder for it, so probably where the frame rail comes up, we'll go straight up uh, with some angle iron, so we'll hug, we'll hug the frame rail, go up, That'll give a good solid mount for the box. This isn't the tailgate, this is actually the front. I just kind of wanted to envision what it looks like together. The cab I think is gonna go up about an inch and the box is gonna stay where it is. So we might, we might drop the back down just a hair, but it's kind of nice to just tack everything and put everything in place. The boom is all set, that is where it's gonna stay. Um, but everything else is just sitting on there. So it looks like we got a lot done, but I really haven't. We're gonna get going on the front, the bumper, figure out the stance, then take the whole truck apart again. So here we go. Tuesday dropped this truck off a while ago. It's pretty stripped already. There's not a whole lot left in there. The whole dash, everything out of the front. And I mainly asked them for the steering components, but a lot of those are already missing. But we are after that. See it? So I think it's just one bolt in the 18 millimeter there. We'll drop, pop that off. These fittings are junk. I hate these. They're like this T 
fuel line looks like garden hose this shit that they send you so we'll put some nicer new uh fuel lines on there we'll take some of the wiring harness with it and throw it on the c10 here we go oh look it's already cut i'm pretty sure that is garden hose so we've got our stacks in place i think this is where i i like them so now we got to blow it apart we gotta mount our fast and our fuel tank, but now I know my constraints as to where I'm going to put things. So if I do wanna put the nitrous bottle and sink it down in, I gotta make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the fast system and the, also the air valves. I was gonna put the air valves right here too. So that means that don't cut the hole here because I might want the air and the fast on this side, and then I'll put the nitrous bottle on the other side. This is about as good of a spot as any to mount the fast. And we could put a bolt through the bottom of here and mount this just up high enough so that the filters will never hit the bottom or be the lowest spot on the truck. Well, maybe we'll raise it up a hair. Um, so we could do that, bolt it, but why bother? We'll take the bracket off. Let's turn it around and try and get it up as high as possible. We'll see, there we go. I was just about to weld this here and then I really remembered, oh yeah, my exhaust is coming here. So, I have to weld it. That's still really hot. <laughs> we'll have to face it that way. So the fast will be right on the inside. The exhaust will come up right here. And if I've got room for my valves for my air, I'll put them there. Otherwise, I'll put them somewhere else. Here we go. All right, so many decisions. I got to mount my fast, my air tank, my air valves, and my fuel tank, and my batteries. Now, um, it's good to just take a look and discuss this. Uh, the air tank is gonna stay where it is. The diff is off center, so there's more room on the driver's side of the truck. So we're gonna leave the air tank where it is. The fast is in a pretty good spot. I wish it was backwards. Now these, these bolts are, I'm afraid to take those out. I'm gonna snap those, so we're just gonna leave those alone and leave it where it is. The only issue is that my in is on the um, front and the outs and the return are on the back. So I need to do UEs with the line. That's not a huge deal. This pump will supply way more fuel than we'll ever need. The Germax just pulls fuel from the tank itself from the CP pump. But um, when you start running higher fuel, it can cavitate. So the fast is a good idea, but it's not as critical as uh, Cummins is with a crappy lift pump where um, it doesn't uh, keep the injection pump cool, which is mainly VP pumps. The air valves will have to go probably on the other side there, and that's okay. Uh, the batteries I think I'm gonna put in the back here, one on each side on either side. Before we do any of that, before we start welding stuff in solid, the fast is just tacked in right now. Um, we're just gonna put everything in place um, we're gonna have a coffee and think things over and then come back and take a fresh look at it because all these plans will be changed or maybe not But anyway, you'll have to stick around. Here we go All right, so I got some stuff off of Amazon to try and keep it cheap. I got these on off 12 volt solenoids I think they ended up being 25 bucks a piece a hang yang. I don't know where they're made. They are 12 volt and a half inch should let lots of air in and out at the same time. So we'll split the system up in half. Uh, a couple of fittings from the local home hardware to so half inch NPT to build something like this. So uh, we're gonna start by building the system just front to back, um, putting more air to the back and to the front and then leaving it at that for now. We'll see how that works. If we need to do a side to side as well, then we'll get more valves later. But for now, we're gonna start with four valves. We might have to go to eight. We're gonna keep it at four for now, front to back. So what we have is air coming in and then going out. This will tell more air to go into the bags. Now, all my fittings I got from a uh, transport truck place. Um, air ride for transport trucks is cheaper than anything online. I think I told you guys that before. So basically we've got our air coming in and if we want more air to the bags we make it go um, to the bags if we want to dump air we tee off and then we open this valve so these are normally closed give power to these to open it we'll give more air to the bags uh, if i want less air i just tee off and just open this one momentarily and it'll drop a little bit of air pressure if i want to slow this down I changed this, I just uh, put a smaller fitting on the way out, and I might have to do that. This will probably be too quick of a drop for a half inch, but we'll get there. I bought this little uh, keychain. It's got four, four keys on it, A, B, C, D, and it's so simple. Um, you got positive coming in, 
and negative coming in, and then when you hit your button, it either activates A, B, C, or D. And then that is controlled by this remote, so if I want more air, I hit A, and it'll open this valve, and it'll put more air to the back. If I want to drop it, I hit B, or just momentarily, and it will allow air to escape, give me a softer ride. These, of course, will have to be activating relays. The relays have to turn these on, and we'll get into that afterwards. For now, we're going to mount it. The valves do have arrows on it, so you really want to pay attention which way your air is going. And then uh, i got to figure out a place to mount them. So I think I'll do the front of the tank to one set and the back of the tank to another set. That way, if we do both at the same time, the air will be escaping both ways of the tank. And then um, I got my compressors on order. Originally, I was gonna use the AC compressor, which you can do as well. That is a air pump, but you need to have an oiler in front of that. So the air coming in, you have to have an oiler on that. It's the Freon that lubricates the compressor. If you don't uh, have a lubricant in there, your compressor will seize, but that AC compressor will put out way more air than um, what those little 12 volt compressors will do. We'll probably get two 12 volt compressors and we'll have to mount them somewhere too. Now that I think about it, I have to be conscious of where I'm gonna do my valves because the compressors are gonna take up more space. So I might have to move my wild valves back here and leave this for my air compressors. See how I like talking things through? Invite your buddies over and tell them what you're going to do. And then as you're doing it, you're like, ah, oh, because you're dead set on something. And then you're like, no, wait, wait, wrong idea. Probably going to mount my valves right here somewhere. So here we go. Okay, so I've made this bracket that will house my four valves there. Now, with the system, all the early systems used to just have a front and a back split. The problem is that um, now that I've ran my lines, so the two back airbags are connected, uh, essentially. But when you make a corner, your body wants to roll, so it puts it allows air to go from one bag to the other. If we run into big issues, um, we'll, we'll address that later. I can put, I can basically change that entire valve body to just do the back two, and I'll do the exact same setup for the front. Um, but anti-sway bars, like big monsters like these should really help that. Um, the bus had ride control, um, so it always put it to the ride height. There's some sensors here that were kind of burnt off. I don't know where they are, but they are on there. And that will basically, if you have a computer, you can push a button and it'll tell it to bring to a certain height. It'll make the vehicle level, but it might do it by putting like 150 PSI and, and opposing corners on the bags and, and drop the other two down to like 70, which is horrible for handling. It's like it's on rollerblades, but you've got a nice level truck. So um the best system is to have pressure sensors on each tire plus ride height controls that only allow the bags to go about 20 percent difference of each other if we get that far we'll we'll get into that but first off i just on a budget i want to do a front to back system uh, we'll do the toggle control on the button but we'll also add toggle switches manual in case we ever run into an issue um, and I just want to basically see how that handles this this tow rig is not going to help for sway as we're going around corners But we'll see if we can get some decent shocks for it as well some uh, um, Adjustable shocks for up and down control and stiffness for that as well So we'll look into that for now We're just going to get the front to back working if you guys know of like a home built computer that's able to control all this stuff um, I'm sure there's little things you can buy and program I wouldn't mind giving that a shot. I just needed to go up and down um, on the valves just for a little bit so I can measure the last of my tires um, and order my rims and my tires. So um, yeah, we're gonna carry on as if normal and then uh, see what happens a little ways when we actually drive it, see how it handles. Here we go. Okay, with the fast system mounted roughly in place, um, I mounted the fuel tank, which is basically just bolted to the frame um, from the top, welded nicely uh, all the way along. 
Now, um, don't recommend welding fuel tanks. This has uh, been empty for years and filled it up with water. You gotta be careful because the fuel does absorb um, into the steel, so it could still be flammable. So I didn't record any of that, but my fuel tank is mounted. Now, um, while we're waiting for lines to start running up to the engine bay, um, we'll hook up our air, and now we're on to compressors. So I bought these off Amazon. They're the uh, Vi Air um, compressors, 200 PSI, and they are the most expensive part of the air system so far at $470 Canadian, 280 US, I believe. Two compressors, if one fails, we have another one. It's got a air filter relocation system, so a barb fitting into here, and then you can put your intake somewhere clean and out of the way. Um, we can even do that, like at the top of the box here, something like that off to the side where it doesn't get rain or, or, or something. We'll figure that out, but let's mount the compressors first. Here we go. All right, so I cut a nice plate, uh, same plate that was left over from the frame. And my height is figured out. I want it as close to the top as possible. Drilled the holes for the bolt holes, stuck them in, and that's basically where I want it. So I'll scribe it, grind off the paint, tack it in place, and then we need to wire them together to go into the tank. I believe that's a check valve but there's also a check valve at the tank. Temporarily, got a couple more fittings from the hardware store. Uh, this will go in, pressure sensor right there. Temporary pressure gauge, just to see what's going on. Okay, so we've got our compressor mounted. That goes to a T-fitting, and then from there it goes into the tank. We've got two check valves. Uh, from there, I've got a, a line coming out and going to one set of valves. The other line is coming from the back and going to the other set of valves. Pressure gauge and the pressure on off for the compressors on the other port which is down below you just have to believe me um, and then this is the pressure relief which will blow I don't know when but I'm sure it will blow at some point so this is the other valve going in now from here we'll focus on these two valves they're both identical but when you open this one the air goes through and goes into the airbags if I want to release air I open this one and the air trap between the solenoid and the bag it will be allowed to exit through that valve so uh, we will be adding a Schrader valve uh, we'll be running pressure gauges we'll have one for the tank one for the front bags and one for the back bags and we'll run those lines nicely and neatly into the cab but we'll do all that after for now we'll put our batteries in place and start running the wires for the compressor and for the valves while tying into our remote. And then once we get into the cab and I start doing my layout for my dash and stuff, um, I'll figure out the toggle switches to override it in case the remote disappears or breaks or whatever, you know, you get the deal. Okay, so hook this up temporarily. Um, this thing is just a MSD solid state relay that uh, is from Holly. It's actually for the Audi, but I'm just for simplicity. Um, it's, it's very easy to use. Um, it's got to go back on the Audi because it's expensive. I'll see if I can get another one for this truck. But all the wiring is just temporary for now because I want to paint the whole frame and everything and then put the wiring on top. So uh, this is the four channel remote from uh, Amazon. We'll put that link down below. And it comes with this nice fancy remote here, ABCD. So you give a positive and negative on the outside. And then you've got three terminals per um, channel. And uh, what it is, is a common, which would be your A. And then when you push the button, this one is normally open and closes when you hit a button. So when you hit, when you hit A, um, for this, this relay right here, you connect terminals A and B. Um, if you don't hit anything, A and C are normally connected. And when you hit the button, they open. So if you if you need to turn something off by pushing the button, this gives you that option too. So basically you give power to all the A's and then your B's are your controls. Your B's end up on the um, top row, which is 12 volt activated. You can control it through the ground at the bottom. So you, you have one ground at the bottom and then there's four other spots to be able to turn the uh, um, the main leads on, but we're doing it with 12 volt positive. So 
Uh, we've got our Bs from our 4 channel turning on our relays. So you've got your main power going in and then your individual um, wires going to your solenoids and then the other ones are grouped together in a ground. So I don't have the um, compressors hooked up to my pressure switch. I did hook up the ground. I'll just jump these for now. We'll build up some air pressure and make sure this works. But I gotta try it, right? You hear that? Ho 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 ho. If we don't have any leaks, I gotta take that side off. We'll air up these compressors. And then I got my pressure gauge there. I'll build up 150 PSI or something. And then we'll remotely raise and lower the truck. I'm pretty excited. It's like 1.30 in the morning. It'll be fine. Let's, let's just keep going. Here we go. So we are at 40 PSI. I think I hear some air. Let's see. All right. I got a tiny air leak on the front. We're at about 120 PSI. Let's see how this works. Oh, I love it so much. Now that uh, while we're waiting for the fuel line fittings to come in from Grassroots and the harness from uh, Billet Performance Manufacturing, I got another project I gotta do. It's just gotta sit outside for just, just a little bit, but I'll be right back on it again. Hot Rod Power Tour 2020. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Two o'clock in the morning now, I'm going to bed. See you next video. There we go.